Amen. You may take your seats in that presence of our King. I give Jesus the glory. Amen. 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 How many know the song that I want to sing that says, Oh, now I do before we finish. The Bible says in Galatians 6, verse number 7, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. 
It's interesting, the word of God is saying, beginning by saying, do not be deceived. That means it is possible there is a window somewhere yeah. where deception can come through even to people that are sober, that are elect, that have a good purpose, that have a good pursuit, that have a good meaning. It is not impossible. It is not uncommon to find an entry point of deception. I'm sure I'm speaking to a people who agree with me that we are living in a society where deception has crept in so much so that it's almost a confusion what is good and what is bad, what is right and what is wrong, what is holy and what is common, what is divine and what is mortal. Why? Because deception came in. And the word of God says, do not be deceived. That's a command, that's not a request. And I know I'm talking to scholars who have chibuat in this Bible, inside and out. Glory to the name of Jesus. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. That means when he has spoken, he does not leave a room for anyone through deception to try to manipulate him. Are we anywhere close? Yeah. Amen. Don't worry, I'll not dress you up, I'll not make you sleep. <laughs> God cannot be mocked. It's not possible to mock him. It's not possible to turn his hand. It's not possible to manipulate him. It's not possible to frustrate his cancer. So don't be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Two statements together that are loaded with power. Do not be deceived. God, let nobody try to swindle you with instructions that are, that are close to truth and tell you that people might live, live by that because there is something about God that you cannot frustrate, that you cannot hold, that you cannot turn. If truth is truth, it means true. If it's not true, then nothing of our study, of our idea, of our belief can make it true enough to turn God. He says, don't be deceived. God can, cannot be mocked. Let me come to the juicy part. Whatsoever a man shows, isn't that what he said next? Don't be deceived. Whatsoever a man shows, that he will reap. I will read it again and again. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that he will reap. All of that is in one verse. All of that is in one verse for a reason. Now, let me get you from myth and wrong teaching. Let me bring you to the place where do not be mocked into thinking that when you sow, you won't reap. That brings us closer home. Now, from this verse of scripture, there are two important things that we see, and I'm not here to teach, I hope I don't have to, that whatsoever a man sows, that tells us two things. One, every man, whatever capacity of life you are in, whether you are a teacher, whether you are a work, whether, whether you are a father, whether you are work, whether you are a mother in the kitchen, you are a potential farmer. Whatever a man sows. That means every man or woman for that matter, every human being is a sower. <laughs> is a sower. Okay, number two. Whatever tells me that anything can be seed. He didn't say that whatever seed a man sows is what he shall reap. He said whatever. So that opened up the entire vast space to anything and the word of God is bringing us to an understanding and an, uh, uh, an understanding that anything is so humble. and anything anyone can sow it okay yes. say it again in Kikuyu if that's how you get it yeah. whatsoever a man sows that he shall reap. Even if I, shall, I go to the reaping part. Whatsoever. Whatsoever means what? 
in whatever is a seed. Let's talk to somebody. Ask, ask, just ask them. What do you sow? What do you sow? <laughs> okay, they might not tell it. But this is the other question. Would you be comfortable if we went to the field where you sowed whatever you sow? Would you be comfortable in us looking at your field? Would you be? Would you be comfortable when we looked at what you sow? Would you be happy if to invite us to harvest with you or to help you harvest what you sow? Uh-huh. Uh-uh, there's an interrogation. You're asking somebody. Uh, are you happy with what you saw? Remember, words can be seen, so don't try to talk too much. Anything, whatever, a man sows. So you can sow words. That's how we find the blessings and curses. Because what you sow to the flesh, there will be a harvest coming. Whatever you sow to the spirit, there will be a harvest coming. The question is, what do you sow? Did you know you are a farmer? How do you deal with whatsoever? This whatsoever, how do you deal with it? This is a self-examination question that you need to go look at time, resources, words, money, attitude. I'm just going to feel because you have, can't even exhaust looking at everything called whatsoever. <clears throat> whatsoever. And we are here today because we are not only farmers, but we are educated farmers. And we can make a change in our society if our whatever is sold to the spirit. Because it is only what is so to the spirit that I just read that say that whatsoever is so to the spirit will bring forth a harvest of eternal life. Amen. So really, it depends on the man and the man meaning human being to sow the whatever in the right way to the right soil. Because you can sow the right thing in the soil, the wrong soil. Unfortunately. And the soils are only two kinds of soil. Only two. Help me preach to somebody. Tell them there are only two kinds of soil. Only two. Not to mature or no manure. No. It's either to the spirit or to the flesh. It's either you are sowing on one side or on the other. And because what else, whatsoever. See, there's not just bebe or bosho. No, see there's anything, anything has the potential to grow when you sow it. Anybody has the power to sow it because they are human. So it depends on us. Now, what do you want to sow and into what? And he says, by the way, don't be deceived. Yeah, you think that this simple gospel, he says, first of all, before we even tell you about whatsoever being a seed, and every man being a sower, and the soil being only two kinds of soil, please don't get lost. No. I mean, don't get deceived, I'm sorry. Yeah. Don't be deceived. Deceived into what? Into thinking that yours will not be affected by this principle. It's a sure will be. I'm afraid because my speaking today is a seed. I pray that I plant it yes. in the spirit Amen. so that there will be a harvest of life, Amen. a harvest of eternal life in the hearts of God's people. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Amen. He says, don't be, don't be deceived. Don't lie to yourself. And don't allow anyone to lie to you. Don't be deceived. It can be either way. You can either deceive yourself. Does the Bible say that in the book of James? That whoever looks at himself in the mirror and then forgets how he looked like, it's like a person who deceives himself. So it is easy to deceive yourself. You can also receive or be deceived by different quarters, obviously by the enemy, who is a deceiver. Or you can be deceived by your own flesh or your own ideas or knowledge or people or people. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. This, this principle of sowing a 
and reaping is real. You can't mock God. He's the one who said to Noah from the beginning after the harvest, from now, seed time and harvest time. He said that. He said it. Why? So that he will produce in us the capacity, the potential, and the sensitivity of whatever he saw. Some of us, unfortunately, are a product of what was sold by people that lived some time. Kitabo. Mm. They sold and whatever they sold we became the outcome of it. Some of us are struggling with life and with the issues of life because of what was sold. Because they harvested it through their children. Mm -hmm. Well, on the other flip of the coin, some of us are beneficiaries of what was sold by those who sold in our lives by the Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Amen. I remember to my mother's death. Almost 25 years ago, my mother, I wasn't there. I wasn't there when my mother breathed her last. But she said to one, she said, go tell that girl. Go tell that girl. She had asked for me so much. She was in a hospital. I won't go in that settings. But she was in a place in her deathbed. And she wanted, if only I can see Lucy, if only I can see her face. But then it wasn't possible because she was dying at a one hospital and I was admitted at a different hospital. But then when that one was going on, my mother saw the seed in my life. Because I'm reaping a harvest out of. Yes. Glory to Jesus. Amen. She said the one and she said, please go tell that girl, preach Jesus. Amen. Preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. When you're weak, please preach the gospel. Amen. If the people like you, preach the gospel. Amen. If they don't like you, preach the gospel. Amen. If they receive you, preach it. Amen. If they don't, preach it. Amen. If your husband loves you, preach it. Amen. If he doesn't, preach it. Amen. That was my mother in her deathbed. I believe she was sowing in the to the spirit so that there will be life gushing out of me and there will be an outcome or a fruit of what she saw at that time. Glory to Jesus. Amen. I didn't know that I would be alive in this moment because that time I was sick in a hospital. But by the grace of God, she sowed. Anybody can sow. You too can sow the right thing. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Amen. And those words became life. Those words became life. Whatsoever a man sows, let nobody deceive him. Mm. Whatsoever a man sows, that he shall reap. Mm. That he shall reap. Mm. If you sow this word, yeah? yeah? Exactly. Mm. If we sow division, if we sow unforgiveness, <laughs> ah, because there are some seeds that don't thrive in the spirit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because only what is sowed in the spirit thrives enough to make it eternal life mm -hmm. or to produce eternal life. Oh God. Precious Jesus, I give you praise. Give you so seeds of wisdom. Talk to me. You worry with that wisdom. Yes. yes. If you saw instructions. Yes, if you receive if you sow hospitality, you bring hospitality. If you sow good ideas to people, you bring good ideas. If you sow love, you bring love. Hallelujah. Yes. Easy. Do not be deceived. The mathematics is not that hard. No, don't let anybody deceive you. Whatever you sow, that you shall reap. On whatever soil. So it determines the kind, not whether it will, it will grow and germinate. No, no, no. It surely will. It only depends which soil did you sow to. Because if it is to the flesh, you reap death. If it is to the spirit, eternal life. Eternal life. I don't know about you, but this to me seems like a very dangerous instruction. Because then it will cause everybody, please be on your alert. Be on your alert. 
because the words you're speaking right now at your lunch table may be seed. Right now, may be seed. The thoughts that are running in your mind right now, maybe 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 seed so whatsoever. Whatsoever. Don't be deceived. Because you can't know God. He's the one who don't know her again, as I say again. From now, now, to every survivor of the flood, seed time and harvest time. The will never cease. So man will consistently, continually be sowing seed or harvesting the crop. Continuously. Continuously. There's some of those things that are planted that it is possible when you look at it, coming up, you say, uh uh, who planted this? If you planted it, have you ever planted something and you just went and rooted it out because you don't want it to get to harvest? You know, you can do that. <laughs> you can do that. I have a little kitchen garden. It's not big, it's a little. And I planted some stuff. And I looked at them and said, Who is supposed to eat this? I planted it. But I didn't know I didn't know that the thing again. Huh? What are you supposed to be? And my children are telling me, You saw that you put manure in it. I'm like, Yeah, I did. But I didn't know this is what you're to be. What on earth is it? It looked wild when it started growing. I said, Ah, uh ah. -uh. You, you took my time, and I started speaking to it. I'm helping somebody. I started speaking to it. I said, don't care if I planted you. Oh, yeah. I don't have to give you another two months in my place, uh -huh. not in my yard. You are not growing here to try to frustrate me. Because first of all, it looked wild in my eyes. <laughs> Number two, it attracted straight insects. <laughs> and this insect started munching on all my brother. Oh, my. I said, ah! Who do you think you are? I planted you, I am rooting you out. Today, today, I tried to put it out, I couldn't. Because the thing had taken root so deep. I tried to cut it in a pan. The corner is sprouting and I say I'll be here every day. And I'll cut out your skin. Uh -uh. You are not sprouting, you're not in my yard. It shall not happen. And I fought with it like an enemy. Why? Because I didn't want it to go to maturity. I did. That's why I oh, was. Yes, I fought it. Amen. And my children were up there somewhere laughing at me from the deck, saying, mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks like you. And another said, mm -hmm, That's a post college. I'm like, I don't care what you call it. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is not staying here. It is taking up and, and the insect, and then my children can't stay outside because of the big insect. I don't even know the name of it. Oh. So, and I'm trying to take a photo of it, so maybe I can ask Dr. YouTube what on earth this is. <laughs> oh, oh, you guys don't go to YouTube, I'm just going to go to YouTube to ask what on earth is this, I don't even have a name for it. And then somebody told me it's a new insect from China. I'm like, huh? <laughs> China, I'm not a copy, 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 Yeah. You don't have 
permission. Mm. Not to have permission. You don't even have the room yes, yes. to plant anything more than you need yes. in this heart. Because come here, you are like a humble. I love you. Put your pen up to begin a humble. We are going to take a shida. Let's see that the one about the the tower that now that is a who who have it. This is my right to throw it out. But if you can, you have the permission to. This is not to say more than you want. Unai, 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 unai. And there are people here. Who need to root something? Yeah. As I come out of Jupiter, what will see from Jupiter in your blanket? Come and look one you do and look at the pussy and that's a good part. We are going to be at Jehovah in the food and in the food book. I can't be a person and go and we have a book. Hmm. We are going to eat you. Come on. Just come on. Come on. Take it out. Root it out. Yes. We don't have much time in the kingdom. The only time we have is enough to sow good seed. And to harvest the good mm-hmm. that brings it from life. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Don't be mocked. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't get deceived. God is not mocked. Mm-hmm. Because he and all that, and our and our family too. Where band that too, and our boy that too. Band that too. The rare too, band that too, and our boy that too. That's it. That the boy that too, and our boy that too. That's it. That the boy that too, and our boy that too. That's it. That the boy that too, and our boy that too. That's it. That the boy that too, and our boy that's a bad part, right? You won't know that what you're doing is reaping a harvest of something you sowed maybe 10, 12, 15 years ago. Nine to quite you without, or maybe just a steer. But as the Holy Spirit quickens it, cut it off. Cut it off. You can do it. You can do it. Because you have what it takes. If your hand planted it, take it out. The good thing is that you can go to the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to show me. What have I planted? That is a right. What did I sow into that soil called flesh? Because that's a big part. Nimchangagani, where did I sow it? What have I sowed in the flesh? That has the potential to give me trouble when it grows to maturity. Look for it. Ask the helper. Show me. Show me. Sometimes we do that when we are frustrated. We do that when we are wounded. We do that when we don't know what to do. We do that when we are underserved. We do that when we are underrated. We do that when we don't see the way, even though there is a way and we can't see it. Every person, including you and me, are from us. We plant, we sow seed. I pray that today, by the help of the Spirit, we'll examine our hearts. And as the Lord, I know you are not mocked. I refuse to deceive myself. Whatever I have sold to the flesh, I am it today. Whatever was sold in my name, in the flesh, I root it out today. I don't know who sold seed with my name on it. With my name on it. But they sold it in the flesh. So it does not have the reward of eternal life. But today as your servant, I have what it takes as a farmer to enter that farmland and remove it. Remove it. My slothfulness has allowed things to grow because they were planted to the flesh. But right now, I awake by the authority of the name of Jesus and I go to root out what was sold that has my name on it that has no potential for eternal life, it has potential to kill me. Is this somebody's prayer? Is this somebody's prayer? Yes. Is this somebody saying today, yes. God, yes. just like I'm a farmer, a farmer can sow, a farmer can root it out yes. if it does not have the potential for eternal life. Yes. God told Jeremiah, I have watched over you, just like I watched over you, to root out. So God said, I have given you authority to root it out. To destroy, to overthrow. Hey, I've given it to you. Authority to demolish, authority to overthrow, authority to destroy, authority to root out. I've given you permission. Go root it out. And then I'll give you the authority again to build and to plant. Glory to the name of Jesus. Why don't you ask Holy Spirit? I don't know what I saw. Anything, anything whatsoever, whatsoever. It was a seed. And I can almost tell, I can almost tell some of the things that I go through, I'm reaping. 
But God, I refuse to live anymore yeah. when you are the God of mercy. Have mercy upon me today. In the name of Jesus. I saw it, but I'm rooting it out right now. In the name of Jesus. I saw it in ignorance. I saw it in foolishness. I saw it because I didn't know the principle. I didn't know. But today, today I see what it is trying to formulate. And I'll not let it grow. Just like I rooted out the thing that was growing in my yard. I had planted it and I took it out. You can take it out. You have the power and you have the permission to. Father, in your presence we are. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are products of what was sown. And many, many of us have sown many, many things. And some of them we know. This is a good time. Because that word, it's a seed. <coughs> 